hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel in the first place uh today we have a dobby uh it's a zombie apocalypse au so it should be at least a little interesting i guess i could have technically done this for Halloween, but whatever here we are so let's just go ahead and get into it damn when is that idiot gonna come back dobby grumbled stuffing his hands into his pockets stop whining for your partner there's more buildings to search, Shigaraki sneered, narrowing his eyes. Dobby scoffed, glaring at him. Well, it's almost night and they've been gone for four hours. Shigaraki laughed, a taunting look in his eyes. So, they could be dead for all we know. If that's the case, it means we just lost a valuable asset. Dobby's glare on the mail hardened as he clenched his fist. He stayed silent, making Shigaraki smirk. Come on guys, we gotta get moving. He snapped getting the attention of the others. Got it, boss! Toga exclaimed, skipping over with an object in her hand. Looky what I found! I can't believe it's still intact! She held up a Deku figurine, making Dobby snicker when Shigaraki disintegrated it. Hey, I wanted that! She whined, childishly crossing her arms. You think I care, Yonder? Shigaraki scoffed, making her frown. I told you not to call me that! Shigaraki sighed. Shaking his head as he led the group down the abandoned streets of Tokyo, Dobby walked up next to Toga and nudged her with his elbow. What? I thought you might want this, he muttered, handing her a different Deku figurine. She squealed, looking up at Dobby with sparkling eyes. Oh, you got this for me? She grinned, hugging the figurine to her chest. Shut up, it's- I found it in somebody's old room and grabbed it. Dobby rolled his eyes, shaking his head. Oh, so you do think of me, Toga continued to pester Dobby, much to his disappointment. Time skip. Hand job on your left, Dobby yelled out, using his quirk to burn a handful of zombies. I knew that dipshit, and stop calling me that, Shigaraki growled, grabbing a zombie's face. Do you two never not argue, Mr. Compress sighed, shaking his head at their bickering. Because you should stop. We have a bigger audience coming in. He pointed at a horde of zombies, stumbling their way over to them. Fuck, where is listener when you need them? Dobby muttered under his breath, stomping on a fallen zombie's head. For once you're sort of right, Dobby. Twice called out, dodging one of Toga's knives as it lodged itself into the zombie's leg. The group continued to fight off the undead creatures, growing exhausted as only more zombies surrounded them. This is bad. We're gonna end up losing. Shigaraki whined, scratching his neck. Man, if only Kurigiri was here and not at the base. Spinner shouted. Shit, Dobby winced, holding his sizzling arm. Anyone got a knife or something I can use? Spinner tossed him as a machete, which he caught with little difficulty. Dobby sliced the zombie's head off, wincing again as he did so. Soon enough, everyone was worn out, the zombies surrounding them and stumbling closer. Dobby quietly chuckled, a grin on his face. This is the end for us? If so, I just want to say I'm the one who put mayonnaise in the shampoo. Toga whipped her head around to Dobby, an angry look on her face. That was you? Beep beep, motherfuckers! You shouted out the window of a military cargo truck, driving at full speed at a group of zombies. And where the fuck were you? Shigaraki yelled, glaring at you as you parked on top of the now actually dead zombies. Where's my thank you? I saved y'all's asses. You flipped Shigaraki off with a shitting grin. Now, I suggest you hop in the back. He let out a string of curses while flipping you off, but reluctantly got into the back of the truck. Listener, where are you? We missed you, Toga whined, crossing her arms. Sorry, Toga. Himiko. Himiko, I found a, an abandoned base that was surprisingly intact, and this bad boy was there along with some more vehicles. You patted the side of the truck. It's a whole lot better than our current one, but I'll have to talk here to Krusty King if he wants to check it out. Toga nodded with a grin before hopping in the back of the truck with Spinner, Twice, and Mr. Compress. Mind if I sit up there with you? Dobby grinned. You know what the answer is, pretty boy, he replied, unlocking the passenger door. He rolled his eyes, hopping in front of you. Buckle up, kids, you shouted, starting to drive towards the group's base. As you were driving, Dobby noticed that you kept on looking at your arm sometimes wincing when he moved it. He furrowed his brows and looked at you in concern, but said nothing. Time skip. Dobby, I need to talk to you for a minute, you said approaching him. Uh, sure, he nodded, standing up and following you into your bedroom. What's up? You sighed, looking at the ground. 
I need you to kill me. I... <laughs> you said blankly, holding your left arm. Dobby looked at you in shock, his eyes widening. What? Why would you need me to do that? He shouted. You said nothing, pulling up your sleeve. Dobby flinched, seeing a bite mark surrounding greenish-looking skin. They got me, you dryly chuckled, tracing over the bite mark of your finger. It's only a matter of time, hun. No. No, I... I don't want to kill you. Dobby put his hands on your shoulders, a frantic look in his eyes. You'll have to in the end, so why not just get it over with now? You frowned, locking eyes with Dobby. I don't want to hurt any of you. You sniffled, tears starting to build up in your eyes. You both stood silent for a few moments before you tightly wrapped your arms around him, letting the tears fall down your face. Dobby, I'm scared, you choked out. He hugged you, leaning your head into his chest. You'll be alright, it's okay, he mumbled, rubbing circles into your back. No, I won't, you know that, you hiccuped, closing your eyes. He said nothing, refusing to believe what you said. We'll figure something out, he trailed off and thought before his eyes let up. What if we just cut off your arms that way we could stop the infection? You sniffled again, looking up at him. I don't know if that would work, though. Dobby put his hand under your chin, tilting your head up. We can try. Time skip. Mr. Compress looked at you, worry behind his mask. Are you ready? You nodded, squeezing your eyes shut. Dobby put a comforting hand on your shoulder while Toka hugged you tightly. One, two, three. He used his quirk to put your bitten arm into a marble. He looked at where your arm was connected to your shoulder, seeing that it was bleeding. Twice bandages. Twice nodded and hurriedly passed him a roll of bandages, watching your worrying eyes. Hold on, dear, it's almost over, Mr. Compress muttered, wrapping up your shoulder. You nodded, biting your tongue as a tear rolled down your cheek. Done. You can open your eyes now. You hesitantly opened your eyes, looking over at where your arm was. Hopefully we don't have to do anything else, Dobby muttered, making you grin. Yeah, I hope so too. You gently pushed Toga off of you, looking back at Dobby with happy tears. You pecked him on the lips and hugged him. He chuckled, hugging you back. You know, this is pretty weird to do with one arm. Oh, maybe we could get you a robo-arm like Mr. Compress, Toga suggested with a grin, bouncing in her seat. Maybe, you smiled, glancing at Compress's mechanical arm. Just maybe. Alright, so that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I I didn't write this, but I was like, what if I kind of rewrote the ending to make it angsty? But I didn't, so this is it. Um... <laughs> There was never a part two to this, so if you're looking forward to that, uh, sorry, but there wasn't one. Um, music link, fanfic link, discord link, Amazon wishlist link are all in the descri description, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, whatever, and goodbye!